Hi Sugar Geeks, welcome back to The Sugar Geek Show. I'm Liz Merrick. Today we're going to be making a delicious banana cake made from scratch. I'm going to be talking all about exactly what you need to make a super moist, the perfect crumb, most amazing banana cake you've ever had in your whole life. At least I think so. The most important thing to remember when you're making banana cake is to use really ripe bananas. <laughs> I think most of us know that a ripe banana means it's starting to get some little brown spots on it, but honestly, the more you let those bananas go and let them get even darker, the more sugar that develops inside the banana and it tastes really delicious. I usually have one or two bananas left over from every bunch just kind of sitting in my kitchen and you know, it's not enough to make banana cake, but I don't want to waste them. So I'll actually pop those bananas into the freezer to just hang out in there until I have enough bananas to make banana cake. The great thing about the freezer is it actually breaks down the bananas and makes them even softer and really brings out the sugar and the flavor of the bananas and makes the most amazing banana cake flavor ever. So just like with any cake made from scratch, you wanna start off with uh, all your ingredients at room temperature or even slightly a little bit warm, especially the things like the bananas that have probably been defrosting on the countertop. They're still pretty cold, so you wanna make sure you nuke those for a couple seconds till they feel just very slightly warm to the touch. Same thing with any liquid ingredients, eggs, butter. Butter should be softened but not melted. Mine got a little bit melty, but it was okay. <laughs> and all of this just ensures that the texture of your cake is going to be soft and fluffy. So to make the banana cake, you're just going to combine together your flour, your baking soda, baking powder, cinnamon, and salt in a bowl and just kind of whisk that together to make sure that all of your leaveners and salt and stuff is just evenly distributed through the flour. And then in the bowl of your stand mixer, you wanna go ahead and put in your butter and start creaming that until it's nice and smooth. Then go ahead and sprinkle in your sugar and your brown sugar. And you wanna whip that until it's light and fluffy and looks very light in color. And this is really going to give your banana cake a nice airy texture instead of it being dense and kind of wet on the inside, which banana cake can tend to be. While that's mixing, go ahead and combine your bananas. If they're not already mashed, go ahead and give them a quick mash with your fork. Don't strain off any of the liquids. That's delicious banana juice. <laughs> I know it sounds gross, but keep that all in there. Mash up your bananas, your oil, and your buttermilk, and just kind of give that a whisk until it's smooth. Okay, so our sugar and butter is nice and fluffy. All right, so now we're gonna add in our eggs one at a time letting each egg incorporate before adding in the next. Go ahead and start off with about half your liquids into the butter sugar mixture, and then a little bit of your flour, and then liquids, and then the rest of your flour. And you just wanna mix that just until it's combined. Don't over mix it or it's gonna make your cake tough and rubbery. Blech. I use a spatula at the very end just to get every last little bit from the bottom of the bowl. Go ahead and divide this cake batter into two eight inch by two inch pans lined with some cake goop. Cake Goop is my favorite homemade pan release. You can get that recipe on sugargeekshow.com slash recipe. Go ahead and pop those two cakes into the oven at 350 degrees for about 35 minutes for this size of cake. Smaller cakes will take less time to bake. Cupcakes take about 20 minutes to bake. All right, while our cake is baking, we're gonna go ahead and make our cream cheese frosting. Again, you wanna make sure that your butter and that your cream cheese is at room temperature. You can definitely uh, soften this a little bit in the microwave, just be careful that you don't melt anything. Butter should be soft enough that when you press your finger into the surface of the butter, it leaves a fingerprint, but it's not melting. So go ahead and put your butter into the bowl. Go ahead and attach that to your stand mixer and just put the paddle attachment on and cream this until it's smooth. If you don't cream your butter like this, you'll end up with small chunks of butter in your cream cheese frosting and you will not be able to get them out. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my cream cheese in small pieces. We want to combine this cream cheese with the butter so that it becomes one. <laughs> if you skip this step, you'll have lumps in your cream cheese frosting. 
Okay, so now this is blended. We can go ahead and start adding in our powdered sugar. But here's the thing. If you mix your cream cheese frosting too much, you will get this grainy separated mess. So you only wanna mix this just to the point where the powdered sugar is incorporated and then stop. Before we start adding our powdered sugar into the cream cheese and butter, you wanna go ahead and sift your powdered sugar so you don't get any lumps. Cream cheese frosting is so good on banana cake, <laughs> red velvet cake, um, all kinds of fruit cakes, chocolate cake. I can't think of any flavor of cake that cream cheese frosting would not taste good on because it's kind of like putting ice cream on something. A cake that has cream cheese frosting on it can be left at room temperature for, I'd say six to eight hours. And then afterwards it should be refrigerated because it does have dairy in it. Cream cheese also has a ton of water in it. So it's not good for putting underneath fondant cakes because if it's touching the fondant, it's going to cause the fondant to get really wet and weepy and not good. But you can fill a cake with cream cheese frosting and then cover it in regular buttercream or ganache and then cover it in fondant. Add in one cup to start. A little bit at a time. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in my flavorings. I'm gonna do about a half a teaspoon of vanilla and just a couple of drops of orange, which is totally optional, but I think really brings out the flavor of cream cheese. Gives it that extra little something. Because our butter is not salted, you wanna go ahead and add in a little bit of salt to bring out that flavor. Once that is mixed in, you can go ahead and add in another cup. One cup of powdered sugar is about four ounces for all you scale nerds out there like me. Depending on how sweet you like your cream cheese, you could actually stop here at two cups or you can add a little bit more if you want it to be more stable or more sweet. So I'm gonna do about two and a half cups of powdered sugar and call it good. Just gonna do a little taste to make sure it's sweet enough. Mmm, oh that's so good. Get you right back here. Ah the tanginess of the cream cheese with that little bit of orange and the sweetness of the powdered sugar is just heaven. So now we're going to caramelize some bananas for the top of this cake. And for this, you actually do want to use you know, a ripe banana, but not super ripe because you want it to be a little bit more firm in the pan. I'm just gonna cut these into about quarter inch slices. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of just regular white sugar and I'm gonna coat my bananas both sides. Give them a nice little coat of sugar. I've got my pan heating up to medium high. Then you just wanna put your bananas in the pan and just cook them until they turn brown. Basically caramelizing the sugar. You want them to be brown enough that they're crispy but not so brown that they're burned. It's a delicate balance. Give it a, oh yeah, that's perfect. That's what we're going for. Obviously the ones on the middle are gonna cook faster. Just flip those over. Sometimes they get stuck together. Okay, and when they're all done, I just take them out and transfer them to a silicone baking mat so that they don't stick. All right, I have my banana cakes here all baked up and cooled. I'm not gonna trim the brown off of these cakes like I sometimes do because it's a banana bread and it's already a little bit brown on the inside. I don't think it's gonna matter. All I'm gonna do is just split them in half so that I can have more frosting to cake ratio. I'm gonna go ahead and frost this cake right on top of my cake plate. My first layer down. Put some of that yummy cream cheese frosting in there.
Finish off with a nice, generous layer right on top. And I'm just gonna put a really thin layer down around the sides, almost like a crumb coat. And what this thin layer of buttercream does is it kind of seals in all of the moisture so that when you put this cake into the fridge, all of the moisture is contained by the buttercream. Just gonna finish off that top with a little swirl pattern. Kind of straighten out my edges. And then what else do you really need? <laughs> Just for fun, I'm gonna put a couple of little dollops of buttercream right on top for my caramelized bananas. Do a little dollop. So cute. And then in the front, in the back, and then just go in between. And that way you can keep everything all nice and spaced. And now you can just put those little caramelized bananas in there, either in the center or on top of your little dollops, however you think it looks best. I'm just gonna put mine in a little circle that looks super yummy. Maybe another little dollop right in the middle. Mmm. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering. Mmm. <laughs> this is the best banana cake I've ever had. It is so incredibly moist, so incredibly full of banana flavor. The cream cheese just accents all of that perfectly. All right, I'm gonna eat my cake. You guys, don't forget to subscribe. New tutorials every Tuesday. Bye.